welcome to the Comic Conspiracy Podcast, episode number 75 for the week of September 17th, 2012. My name is Ryan Higgins, and I'm joined by a venerable cast of, 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 of Brock Sagers, apparently. Yeah, Brock Sagers. They're all Brock Sagers. I cloned myself Good to know. over the weekend. Who else have we got down the end of the table? Omar. Across from Omar. Toby. And next to Toby. Charlie. Charlie. Nice Charlie. Nice, yes, Charlie yes, shaved. Nice Charlie. He's no longer evil Charlie. He's no longer from the Mirror Mirror Universe. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, hopefully you had a good fight with evil Charlie. <laughs> and you won. I won. You were victorious. Yes. Uh, light news week. The last few weeks have been kind of quiet. Thank God all you people love writing us crazy questions on Twitter and on email. And uh, so we got a bunch of questions to read here. Uh, I'm, we're going to talk some AVX 11 later. If anyone has anything else to talk about, you should let us know. Um, not that you're going to hear this. I, I wonder you f- what crazy is with Ryan. I meant you four. Like, if, ta- if you want to talk some comic stuff, let me know. But uh, I'm going to start reading some questions. Holy crap, we're going to talk comics on this podcast? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, Psylocke on We can talk on Valiant. The- Ooh. Psylocke and the x It's all cartoons and hero clicks this episode. So. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Charlie, this one's for you. It's not for you, but this one's for you. Uh, I love Alex Ross's work in Justice and Kingdom Come. What other yeah. books has he done that you recommend? Charlie is our resident Alex Ross super uh, fan. Super fan, yes, right? Yes, Thank I you. Am. Um, so let's hear some recommendations. So if you're looking for interior, he did like one. Okay, first, if you love Kingdom Come, you should pick up the Thy Kingdom Come story they did in the Justice uh, Society of America book. It's available in three trades. Alex Ross only did one interior for like a one-shot issue they did in there, but he did have some oversight in the overall story and it's written by Jeff Johns and it's awesome. It's ignore the The Kingdom follow-up. Just ignore it. It never happened and just picked up the Thy Kingdom Come Justice Society. Can books. I add on that? Sure. Dale Eaglesham is not bad too. He's a pretty sick yeah, he was the artist who was doing the yeah. work around yes. Alex Ross. Yeah. But good call on that book. Um, but, I mean, beyond that, pretty much Alex Ross does interiors very sporadically. Like, if I recall, the first thing he did was a Terminator book <laughs> that I, I I think it was Terminator Burning Earth. Yeah. And right? you have to mention Marvels. That's Yes. Oh, yeah. I Absolutely. don't know. It's hard to pick between Marvels and Kingdom Come. I really liked Marvels. Uh, this is a four issue miniseries. Well, mm-hmm. four issue and a zero. And uh, if you can find it, it's got a nice hardcover. Yeah, uh, miniseries <laughs> by damn hardcover whore by Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross. It sort of did the opposite of Kingdom Come. Kingdom Come was sort of the end of like the big DC universe for all the big yeah. heroes. This was the early days of the Marvel universe through the eyes of a reporter. So kind well, of the same. Both stories are sort of told from yeah, the right. point of view of. Someone else. A, a normal person, basically. Yeah, yeah. This is a reporter that kind of saw the birth of the Marvel Universe through when he was a kid during mm-hmm. the uh, World War II, mm-hmm. then into the modern age. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Amazing, amazing book. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, he's also had a l- I don't remember if he did the interiors fully or – I was talking to Brock and Ryan about this just a little while ago – in the Avengers slash Invaders book. But all that being said, he will be doing the interiors in the Dynamite Masks book coming out soon. That's like the big crossover between Green Hornet and Zorro and Shadow and a lot of those pulpy heroes. So I'm really excited for that. Yeah, it should be cool. Yeah. Anyone else favorite Alex Ross book besides Kingdom Come and I Marvel? Like, I like his Crisis on in- in- Infinite Earth cover. The, the giant big the giant case. Yeah. shit the poster with George Perez yeah oh, we yeah, actually that, have that, that framed in that the back poster really awesome yeah. oh my god I have that poster nerd gasm and I uh, got it signed the 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 comic book shop I was working at before this one uh, actually got it signed for me he um he went he's I had to work that night and he goes you want anything I was like that poster would be cool so he got oh it signed for me but it's so damn large it's such a bitch to like put it up right? oh like, how the hell am I gonna put yeah. this up it's so huge yeah, you so have to I'm not it. how how is it framed at the back is it a small version of it no someone no. framed it yeah full frame someone by the name of your girlfriend no 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 like some customer he was clearing out his stuff and he goes this is kind of what I have left and I couldn't do anything with it do you want this stuff why is it not up here. You should put I gotta up. dust it and I gotta find a place for it. Uh, it's giant. I don't know what it is. It is huge. It's huge. Hey, look, it can fit right up there. It would be <clears> kind of cool. <laughs> I mean, well, right? here, here's the other thing, no, though. I, I still got no, the. Uh, I think it would not be really. Too it's big. too big. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Is it? Oh, the no, height. Oh. It's, uh, yeah. it, well, no, you, you, you can hang it from the ceiling. You can put the rooftop, <laughs> I mean. Like, you know, like some kind of hangers or some shit. Like a. See, it's so big. On the other side, you can put the Jim Lee Batman. One at a time, guys. One at a time. 
The other side, you could put the Jim Lee Batman he- Heroes and Villains. Those are bigger. Yeah. Oh, are they? Yeah, those are huge. Together they are, though, not single. No, I think individually. No, no, no they are they're, not. I don't know. They're not. All I know Trust is me. I've always wanted to get those framed. And because I still those have. I have, and I have an easier time. If I were to frame, those were easier to frame than the, in, uh, the Alex Ross one. I thought they were bigger. No, the yeah. Alex Ross one is longer. It might be taller, but the Alex Ross one is longer. Hmm. Okay. Well... Yes, lots of good stuff there for uh, for P fans of Alex Ross. Uh, this oh, that was from um, RS RS Shooter, I think that is. Um, this is from Lopside Down One. Uh, it says this is less of a question, more of a curiosity. Team Seven opinion. I'm sure that would be discussed yes! anyway. Uh, Team Seven is a well relaunch of an old Wildstorm book that they're bringing back to DC Universe. Uh, Zero Issue came out this week. I haven't read it yet. What do you guys think? Anyone read oh, it yet? Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. I did. I didn't know it came out. Yeah. What's yeah, wrong with that? Yeah. Was it my pick of the week? Mm, I don't think so. Was, was it my pick of the week? I think it was my pick of the week. Yeah, I think it was my pick of the week. You should go run over and get it right now and it's, read it. At least. What the my hell? Pick and I didn't even read it yet. Well, this is how busy I am. I don't even watch my cartoons anymore. I didn't even know fucking Team 7 came out. Yeah. I guess for me, because I did read it, I enjoyed it, but it's purely purely a setup book of okay these are the characters so we have to get them all together and it shows the different recruitment which while it was interesting doesn't really give you any of the story this is where they're going from here mm-hmm. so but it does have some foreshadowing going into the suicide squad issue zero because the team seven book at well, least the zero issue from is. From what I understand, it's it's um, in the past. Team Seven, Deathstroke, then Suicide Squad is sort of the, the crossover. Is that how it goes? Well, the the way this basically works so far is the Team Seven book seems to take place in the past. Right, it's the setup for this yeah. kind of super spy so, DC team. What <clears throat> what the zero issue had is getting these group of people who appear in various book as you said you have grifter you have amanda waller you have deathstroke you have basically all the typical mercenary types getting together in the team seven book deathstroke yeah and then in the suicide squad book you have basically that opens with amanda waller being approached by somebody she recruited into some branch of the military i don't Mm -hmm. remember which Mm -hmm. and it's made pretty clear that she's basically under a self-imposed retirement because of events from that happened within Team 7. They make that very clear that that evidently ends very badly. So hmm. it, it was sort of an interesting contrast to see in the same week the sort of start of the Team 7 stuff and knowing already that it has to go very, very badly. Well, I think the new book is... Uh, minus the zero issue is about the team kind of reforming or or sort of the the yeah. modern day after effects of what the original team did yeah mm-hmm. maybe i never read like uh, gen I 13 found it interesting I never the hell is wrong with you i never books. read it either Actually, i mean gen i like 13, the you'd like it yeah i think you'd like gen 13 the early yeah. ones okay everything else but is isn't good. team 7 like connected to it in some way yeah there's a well depends which version but yeah there's a couple uh there's one member that's the same Oh okay. Yep. Wasn't the original Team Seven a uh, Deadshot or um uh, it was Fairchild's well, Lynch. father? Lynch. It was Lynch and it was uh, Deathblow. Death Blow. Yeah. Grifter. Death or was Blow Grifter in it? Awesome. Yeah. He was okay. No, but in this in this one, I read it. It's it's basically like Charlie said, a recruitment issue. Right. It's right. Lynch is talking to people that you don't know who he's talking to about forming a team, and then it goes into recruiting each person for the team. But I I did like how you got this. It, it really did feel like a zero issue because it's like okay, number one is it's going to take you. You're going to see where we go with number one. But it was nice to kind of have that Suicide Squad one where we see the aftermath of Team Seven, especially with Amanda Waller, and then we go into the beginning of the Suicide Squad. The the only thing that I found very kind of in a way funny about the zero issues is. So the Team Seven Zero issue as a team book was very much into the what you'd expect from a zero issue of a team book yeah. in terms of getting the team together. I don't think any of the other team quote unquote books focused on more than one character for the zeros that I've read so far. No. Because Suicide yeah. Squad was just all Waller. Um Legion Lost was just Timberwolf and his origin. They're they're kind of picking 
This but, and I'm kind of expecting the Teen Titans is just going to be Robin. Well, Red Robin. But I think that I think that with yeah. like especially with the the Suicide Squad, and I think what they're doing, well, what it feels like is is the Suicide Squad pre fifty two used to be called Task Force X. So I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to take Team Seven and Task Force X and kind of put those two kind of ideas together. Hmm. Because the only the I didn't mind the Amanda. Waller was by herself in the Suicide Squad one because that's where she started the that's where her idea started. Well, I agree with that, but they at least the impression I got reading the Suicide Squad is we weren't reading their first attempt at the Suicide Squad. I didn't really get the impression that this was brand new. They just brought these people together. It was more like some people had already been going on missions. Some people were new going on missions. It, well, if you if you look at this, go back and read the Zero issue and then what? read Kicked I, in the Teeth. And it's literally like you're dropped right into what Suicide Squad is in that issue. Hmm. So I think that I think it works. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just curious to see what other retconning they do in the trades. Got a few more questions here. Oh, can up. we talk about the retconning? Uh, of what, Robin? You well, yeah. The fact that they changed stuff in the Teen Titans trade. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I saw that. Eh, how about that? Liefeld is doing an homage to uh to uh the Deathstroke book, the Teen Titans book. Yeah, I saw that too. So real quick, um, yeah, we can talk about this real quick. Uh, they've already kind of reconned out some of the um New Fifty Two stuff, but for me, that's. I don't care. That's just them changing their mind about something from the yeah. first issue. It was just a throwaway line of Red Robin saying he was Robin. Now they're just going to say, oh, he's always well, Red Robin. But they also eh. threw away the line about previous versions of the Teen Titans. Right, yeah. right, right. So. Well, uh, as well as, um, I'm sorry, this is um, the Tim Drake version of Robin. Yeah. It was always Red Robin. Wait, that doesn't make sense with Starfire. I'm that didn't happen. Now. What, Tom, Starfire is not a whore anymore? Uh. No, no. For, from what I recall in Red Hood, she she had been on the Teen Titans. Yeah, she Titans. talks about the Teen Titans. Like, so. she talked about oh. being on the oh. Teen Titans. Oh. Yeah. Eh, that's stuff. I mean, it's annoying, I'm but... Just, it just amused me a little bit that they're so committed to this that going forward in trade versions, they actually went back to change text within the issues. They've so done that it's before. Con- Marvel and DC have both done hmm. that. I well, have never DC. noticed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. DC. Well, hell, they're doing that in Avengers now. Well, that's just UK <laughs> version. Yeah, they yeah. edited the, the, the UK sword. version. Well, yeah. the deal with the um, with this, they edited the UK version of the Avengers. That was actually the version that was, um, uh, I guess there was a version that was on like the, uh, I think it may have actually been the version that was on the movie theater there. There was a, really? uh, yeah, I, I was resuming some follow-up to this. They edited the DVD out to, to when Agent Coulson gets, you know, when he gets... Uh, Spoilers. Gutted. Um, a friendly pat on the back. Shanked um through. Uh, they don't show the blade, but I, I was reading something that I guess that that was how it... They took that out for some, uh, like, 12-year-old rating... Uh, uh, hmm. uh, Rating, I guess, uh, oh. in the UK. Oh, well, so that makes sense. Kind of weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. They do something like that. Yeah, they yeah, do yeah. that stuff here all yeah. the time, actually. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Robots can die. He's an <sighs> LMD. Oh, yeah. We'll see him in the shield. Why you think he's going to be Division? Huh? You think he's going to be Division? Oh, that's a cool idea. <laughs> that is a cool yeah. idea. Yeah, it's yeah, like a big internet rumor. I'm not going to take credit for it. Yeah. I'm going to say it's the internet. They started uh-huh. it. I'm just going to read down this list until we, uh, until we get to the end. I'll just uh, keep going. Um, it's from Jason Gentry. He asks, any thought on Dial H? It's on the fence for me. I may drop it. Uh, the issue zero is the only reason I'm not dropping it at this point. I've only had the first two. It's okay. It's kind of weird. It was but I okay. Like it. it didn't really like the normal issues. Didn't really get me going. But there's sort of a big reveal on what I would call the downside of the dial within the zero issue that got me kind of excited again for it. Hmm. And it also okay. I'm just going to spoil it. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Look at you. Spoilers. Wow. So. In the Zero issue, they, they kind of acknowledge the fact that the dial's been around a long time in a lot of different forms because it's actually a sundial in the Zero issue that's being used by an ancient culture to summon a character called Bumper Carla, which is basically a superhero that drives a bumper car. That's okay. cool. Um, and defeat this big beast. And at the end of the issue you find out that the way the dial actually works is it summons the spirit of a hero from basically the multiverse. They make it seem like another universe within the new 50, 
the new 52 multiverse kind of thing. So at the time when Bumper Carlo was summoned to help defeat this monster, Bumper Carlo was actually in the process of saving some people who then died. Everything you just said made me think of the men who stare at goats <laughs> and thought that maybe there's a bunch of comic writers that were thrown in during the 60s yeah. and 70s with a lot of drugs. Like Grant Morrison was definitely <laughs> one of them. He was probably like the first uh, test subject. And I, they I, wrote up all these crazy yeah. ideas. And, you uh, know. I just kind of <laughs> pictured the idea of, okay, Superman's going to go save these people and he's the one that's dialed up from the dial H and the plane crashes instead. That's essentially the way it comes off. It's literally when somebody summoned through the dial it doesn't matter what they're doing how much it messes up their life that's cool yeah no that's funky yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah yeah i had actually dropped i had actually dropped the book after issue four and charlie had told me that information and uh, that made me interested in it but not interested enough to read yeah. it because i i couldn't stomach the the dialogue and stuff in in the book it was yeah. that's how i felt about su- that's how i felt about suicide squad after issue nine <laughs> you just don't like mayans i do i do no, love mayans don't. i love all ethnic people no you don't so okay. any event i guess <laughs> in a roundabout way i'm not saying that dial h is the best book ever after that reveal but it's got me at least committed to the next issue so yeah i'm gonna keep reading it i like the concept yeah uh so here's a question oh, yeah the concept's awesome yeah. here's a question uh question uh from timothy jones on twitter uh, he asks, oh, this is actually a really good question. Uh, starting to get into comics, digital or physical? What a great question. Mm-hmm. Um, Timothy, my answer to you is how close are you to a comic book store? If there's comic book stores around you, I find most people prefer a physical. I find most people that don't have stores near them or can't get to them conveniently prefer a digital for ease of, ease of you know, reasons. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of you know your own personal choice. I obviously suggest physical, but, um, you know. Uh, digital comics are cool. This, they're definitely getting bigger. Uh, we do really well at digital storefront. I don't, Comicology seems to be doing really well. Uh, obviously, you know, a, lot, a couple of people in this room buy them both both ways. Mm-hmm. I think both ways is going to be, uh, which is what I always assume. Most people will buy in both ways uh, if they're buying digital comics at all. They'll tend to buy you know a little bit of both. So, See, especially if you have a shop within fifteen miles of you, mm-hmm. twenty miles. See, to me the. The nice thing about a lot of the digital frontier and the sales that are going on constantly is you can easily give something to try that you haven't started getting into. And I mean, you can literally try one issue during a sale for 99 cents, or you could buy a series of issues to get caught up to start getting them after that point. But I mean, well, I was, I've um, been go ahead, go. playing around with reading different things online. I mean, Marvel used to have a free app that is the way I got introduced to Ultimate Spider-Man, and I immediately started buying the hardcovers after that. So uh, I I definitely think sort of using digital as a way to try different things is a very successful way to figure out what you want to buy and how you want to buy it. Well, I was talking with my rep with uh, DC at uh, DC Comics today about this a lot. Um, They were talking about a lot of trades going out of print, a lot of trade paperbacks, a lot of the collected editions. Um, And my kind of phrase to him was hey digital is not a replacement for single issues i think digital is a replacement for the trade paperback they're the versions you keep they're the versions you really want Mm -hmm. um you know people will do their sampling or buy the big runs uh digitally instead of a trade even though they're formatted and priced in a single issue format uh i I think that the digital really is for the the trade market over the single issue market um so i guess it kind of comes down to that if you want to read older stuff collected editions read them all at once Digital may be a little bit easier because trades, you know, especially a lot of big famous and classic stuff isn't still in print, but a lot of little kind of niche stuff's going out of print. Uh, but if you've got a store near you, you know, head down there on a Wednesday, hang out, and you don't get that online. So you want to sell your books back, you may not get much, but you're not going to get anything for them digitally. Plus, I mean, not to put too fine a point on it, but even people coming in here, just talking to the random customers, I've I got recently introduced to the Dead Wardians that way, and yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's awesome it's just it's talking to people, community. and yeah. people will love to talk to you about the books they like. Unlike online, where they really just want to rip each other's throats yeah. out. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, I also, I mean, it's also a space issue. I mean, sure. it's not only just is there a store near you or is a store not near you. It's it's also do you live in a place where you have space yeah, to of course. actually store these things because i mean i i go i fill up a long box 
probably every three to four months. Yeah, yeah. So that's see, about how long it takes me to fill up a bookshelf. But you know, here's one of the <laughs> things too, right? And this is one of the great things I find with uh, with buying the physical as opposed to digital. I, mean, I suppose you could find a way to sell the digital books to someone if you really wanted to. Um, but you know, you could tr- maybe transfer their code or give sell your account to them. I don't know. Sell your entire account. Yeah, more may- likely. Yeah. yeah, but um, you know, if you've got the physical books, you know, one of the things I've I've learned very easily uh, is that you have to purge. You have to get rid of stuff. Yes. How many people? I don't know how many people here. I don't think you guys really do. But some of the people listening, I'm sure you have a Steam account with 600 games, 550 of which you never played. Well, if those were real games, you could just sell those or give them back or put them on eBay or do something with them. They're digital games. You can't do shit with them. They're st- you, you paid for them. You're stuck with them forever. Um, That's why it's all about the price point you paid for. Sure, but even at a dollar a piece, you know, you might, digital may be a buck a piece at the cheap end. This is all assuming you know well, legal purchases. Uh, for, you know, but for comics, you can buy a lot of those physical ones for a quarter a piece. Yeah. Stock up. You know, you buy them on eBay for nothing. Way uh, cheaper was, than you'll get them on on Comicology for, uh, even be, on a sale. I'll be the first one to admit I've I have purchased far too many books that ended up in the quarter bin at full price. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like yep. I, I've, I I'm proud that I have a complete run of the original cable series i stopped collecting around the soldier x issues and i swear i've seen at least 75 percent of them in quarter of it yeah of course of course well, so if whenever it, i get to start purging i'm sure that all my stuff that comes back to ryan will be in quarter of a <laughs> free box on like you know free comic book day well i mean and, and it's also it, i mean you say there's, there's also overlap i mean i'm i'm not touching digital right now but i knew i know if you know, I start traveling more or, you know, going out. I mean, I'm going to want to have something that I can potentially read. I mean, I'll still take like a book with me, but uh, I won't start. I won't be taking graphic novels with me to read anymore. I'll much rather download stuff online. See, yeah. I would rather see graphic novels come with a digital code than the single issues. Yeah, ex- yeah. I, I, I kind of agree. completely and totally agree with that. Yeah. No, I would love that. Absolutely. What's totally. this guy's name again? Uh, this is um, Timothy Johns, Tiny Tim 31 on Twitter. Tiny Timothy. Tim. Don't listen to what Brock said. If you when you're traveling, you on a plane, you want there's nothing more there's nothing more the sexy window. there's nothing more sexy than pulling out your comic books from a plastic case. Well, that's <laughs> and, uh, and then you pull them out of the mylar and then you look over at the girl, <laughs> give a little wink. Yeah, you know, there's nothing like that you sexiness. Know, it, it, it's funny that you should mention that Omar because when I took care of you when he had a few too many drink, I was trying to find your keys, and I looked in your backpack and guess what I find? I find two plastic bins like little snap-ons with comics in them. Holy fucking nerd! He's got he he went to the bar with comic books in his backpack. That's was, right, baby. This, you never know when you have time to read. <laughs> yeah, it's like your goals, man. I I'll admit I always 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 kept a trade in my car for the longest time. I thought. All right, let's uh, let's move on here. We got um, Crossex Hunter. He writes this all the time. Uh, any of you guys reading Spider Man or the Ultimate Spider Man run? Fuck no. Spider Man. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I read yes. the first two issues of Spider Man. Yeah, I'm current. I read this Are we talking about first three? Amazing. No, no, he, no he's no, talking no, about Spider- the crossover. Mean. The mean. The Peter Parker mean. from normal Marvel U crossing Miles. over into the Ultimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the the Spider Man with yeah. Black Spidey. Yeah. yeah, like real black guy, like bl- yeah, like black black, black no, crow Spidey, he's, Spidey he's with a real black, black uh, on white, Spidey. like he has webs on no, his head too. He is Why are you black. Uh, <laughs> not touch him. Yeah, you are. Not touch me. He's Sicko. black and Mexican. Yeah. yeah. Any of it? Anyone yeah. reading those? I am. I'm reading am. the Spider Man. You've read Ultimate Spider Man, both of you, Toby yes. and Charlie, from like issue one, right? Yes. Oh, I read all the initial Ultimate Spider Man up until when Miles took over the suit, and then I only made it a couple issues in before you ran out of a couple issues. Yeah. Uh, so well, I stopped when he switched to uh, the Ultimate Comics, Super yeah. Yeah. Ultimate Spider Man, or whatever the title is. So Spider Man versus Ultimate Spider Man team up. It's uh, a fun book. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Most offensive comic All ever you guys published. Are just there. haters, man. It's I'm, just not, I'm not a hater. I, I still just find it funny, and I, I understand why they've made their statements before. But I still remember back in the day when they're just like, when we cross over the Ultimate Universe with the normal universe, it means it's dead. We're right. out of ideas. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it's a fun book. I mean, it's not a serious book. It's just like that's right. well, fun to read. It's a Fun book. I like the fact that they, as 
Certain writers have a ability to kind of go, okay, I'm going to sort of change the way you look at this from time to time. And I like the way they did that with Mysterio in the Spider-Man book, sort of establishing it was always the normal universe's Mysterio interacting with both Spider-Man. He was he had a device that was basically allowing him to puppet to the other world. So I did like that aspect cool. of and it. And the original like. Ultimate Spider-Man run is freaking amazing still. Yeah. I stand by it still. Yeah. The new stuff I just I haven't read it in su- such a long time. I came back for, I came back around um the relaunch after um, Ultimatum and I lost a few issues, but eh. All right. Uh we got a couple of Batman questions here. Uh one from Don. He asks, uh, "Ooh, do you think the next Batman movie should focus on the Court of Owls?" That's kind of neat. I don't know if that would work in like the JLA because suppose, supposedly the next Batman movie is going to be like the JLA Batman, but um, Court of Owls could be cool. It's been a good crossover. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. That's like the Jeff Johns Green Lantern's going right into the movie a little early. All right. Well, I'm just thinking. Do you really like Court of Owls? If you did it like directly, having it the big reveal being potentially Bruce Wayne's brother, I just don't yeah. think that would. Yeah, translate over people very well. Are different, yeah. Well, and, I mean, Batman has such a, a gallery of villains that you can you can play around with that we haven't seen or yeah. that we need to revisit. That I think that going to something like the Court of Owls, which is a fairly new creation, sure, it, it, it would it, it would throw people. But if you, it was maybe the the next movie or the third movie, I think it would work because then well, you could of they, course redo Jonah Hex and tease the shit out of it in a Jonah Hex movie. <sighs> If they actually... Oh, yeah, there was a Jonah Hex movie. Yeah. I forgot about that. If they actually did it properly to sort of build it up over a couple of movies, lay some hints, then mm-hmm. I think it would work better. But mm-hmm. I kind of feel like if you just jump straight to that for the typical movie goer, they think you jumped the shark, making it Bruce Wayne's brother. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I think that, you know, the way the animated movies have been, it's all either Superman or Batman. And, oh. You know, it's going to be Superman's turn. That'd be that, a good. Ba- that'd be a good animated movie. Court of Owls yeah. Oh, yeah. is made for is a made for animated. I mean, that's just like would be perfect visually. Yeah. Everything about it, like especially the way they cross over all the characters, and, and it is really like a Batman, uh, you know, Batman family book. Well, you, you can know? have that one Story. scene where they're like, you know, the the court is attacking everyone. You yeah. know, Bat Family go, and you show all like little segments of all the different guys going out there yeah. and fighting them. Yeah. All right. Continuing. Uh, uh, continuing the Batman question. This is from uh, The Serial Kills. Uh, what do you think is better, Scott Snyder's current Batman run or his run on Detective Comics? To me, I, I mean... Detective. Detective. Well, I was going to say, I mean, as much as I love Batman, and obviously he's one of the best-selling books, Detective, his run on Detective is what got him this job. That, yeah. the, uh, the Black Mirror was such a good arc. Oh, God, it was... Um, yeah. I, I, well, I think the thing is, is that wasn't <sighs> Batman. When no. he was writing it, he was writing about Gordon and right. James, and he was writing about um, this is all about Dick Babs. and yeah. you know. So he was he was writing Dick. He was writing about his Dick. Dick yeah. Grayson, <laughs> Nightwing. <laughs> Jeez, but I think that no, his, the Black Mirror is amazing. I mean, com- yeah. if you're you, but you can't really compare them because it's they're very different. They're very different. Batman is Bruce Wayne. Batman and Black Mirror is you know. We still get some of kind that, of though, the go- now. It's more of like a Gotham U yeah. universe I mean, book. He still is able to do his little like indie Batman stories through Two-Face in the back of the book with the most incre- one of the most fascinating uh, il- you know, artists, uh, Simon Kudransky. Is that his name? Simon Kudransky? Sounds right. Yeah, the dude that did um, a lot of that art, too. Ah, uh, shit. Yeah, so I mean, we get it in the back of the Batman books. I mean, it's been, what, the last five issues or so? The that's Two Face stuff. Yeah, Two Face yeah. yeah. was. I thought that was in the back of the detective. No, no, it's been the backup story, oh. Batman. Yeah, but has that been over for a little I while? I think it's over now. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it didn't yeah. run very long. Did anybody read the Batman Zero? Other I than did. me? Not yet. Yeah, you're caught up on all the I zeros and everything. I loved huh? the backup story in the Batman Zero. Mm, yeah, I really loved. Like the main story was good, but that backup story just blew me away so yeah and Snyder was to totally that tweeting out that yeah he's excited about the book and told anybody i could read it early to read it early yeah. save your spoilers all right um yeah scott snyder save your spoilers here's a question that's going to have a long answer so let's keep it short uh 
Do you think Marvel now was well, actually from Jason Gentry as well? Ryan uh, do you, just doesn't like to talk. No, know? I do. It's just I got a bunch of questions, well, and we got a few more things to talk about, and so I want to get through this. Um, yeah, hero clicks. Do you think Marvel now will have the same impact on the New Fifty Two, uh, the DC, that the New Fifty Two did with DC? Well, if, so, if, so, if so, why? If not, why not? I mean, I think we've talked about this a handful yeah. of times, but by cool. launching only a handful of your books, not rebooting the continuity, having a lot of the same people on on just different titles. I'm excited about Psylocke on the X Force. I'm excited about some of the books, but yeah. to me, again, I had my my breakdown of Cannonball and. Uh, Sunspot last week yeah, on yeah, Avengers. Yeah, like yes, some cannonball did. in your ass. And yeah. everybody else likes it except for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, apparently. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it just, uh, I just don't see it having the same sort of impact. It'll, it'll have an impact for a month or two, but not sustained like DC has. And don't get me wrong, DC sales have come down, but they're way better than where they were. Yeah, I mean, DC, they put their balls out there. You know, Marvel, they're, they're just tipping it. Just, you know, just a tip. Just <laughs> tip, tip, just a tip. Well, really, you were like humping the table like a small chihuahua, <laughs> and I have to sit next to you. I guess that's all we have to say about that. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, here's a question I'm gonna love to answer. Okay, oh, you ready? Son of you ready? It's, it's gonna uh, be herky jerky. Anyway. This is from uh, this is from Danny on Twitter. He asks. <laughs> I picked up a copy of Mark Wade's Legion Superheroes Volume One. Ooh. Was wondering how the Legion stories Good pick fit, fit into the main DC universe. All right. Oh, Here we go. <laughs> oh, all of a sudden, Ryan wants to talk. Danny, yeah, cherry you have yourself on that one. Yeah. Danny, do not don't do this to this guy. As a I'm current don't as a current Legion fan, oh, and, no. and as a more recent Legion fan, you must do. I hear this really loud ringing. What the hell is that? Maybe my ears ringing. Um, Danny, you must pick up Legion of Three Worlds, the Final Crisis Legion of Three Worlds. That's incredible. Jeff Johns is awesome. Yes. Jeff Johns yes. and George Perez. Yeah, that was dope. This will explain to you uh, where the Mark Wade Legion fits in, but if you don't want to know, if you just want to, for us to tell you, we'll tell you right now. <laughs> so you had the original Legion of Superheroes, okay? You ready, Brock? You had the original Legion of Superheroes. They were thrown, like, kind of all all screwed up, and um, Omar's just checking out. They were, like, totally screwed up with continuity. They did this, like, five-year reboot. I am never they, getting Legion back issues for you ever again. Legion's so good. Oh, my God. They, there was so much continuity screw around, and especially after Zero Hour. They basically rebooted these guys as, like, little kids, all right? They, they went back. So you have the original Legion that was, you know, ran for a long time. Then in the 90s, you have the Zero Hour Legion of Superheroes. Then Mark Wade comes around in the early 2000s and has this brand-new Legion of Superheroes. Heroes. This is what's called the three boot. Uh, as you know, reboot is the zero hour one, and the three boot is the Mark Wade one. Um, what Jeff Johns ingeniously decided to do was that the Legion of Superheroes, the original Legion, which he then brought back in Action Comics, was the actual original Legion of Superheroes. These are the real guys from, Earth, well, quote unquote real guys from Earth One, the mainline DC Universe Legion. The Legion from uh, Zero Hour was like the legion from like earth 237 it was they were like the legion from this all parallel universe the mark wade legion is actually the legion from earth prime which is our universe earth prime is in the dc universe and that's where superboy prime is from superboy prime features heavily in legion of three earths or legion of three worlds which is so good legion uh, superboy prime is my favorite so yes, it's you have three legions. You have like multiple brainiacs. You have you they get in with impulse and uh, excess from the from the uh, the legion from the um what is it the and now Charlie's turned his mic off. Uh, legion. Well, no, I turned it back. Oh, on. Oh, you turned it back on. Okay, uh, excess and impulse from the legion of uh, the the two thirty seven whatever the hell they are. Uh, trust me, it, like it sounds way more confusing than it really is, but it's super fucking awesome. What's this guy's name well, again? Right? Uh, Danny. Thanks a lot, Danny. <laughs> see, Appreciate that. See, this is where it gets. <laughs> Even more messed up because for me, if you're going to read that book, then you should really read Infinite Crisis if you haven't. Oh, uh, Legion of Three Earths makes or the Legion of Three Worlds makes no sense if you don't know the Legion of Superheroes. Okay. But it All is right. a fantastic All book. All right, hold on. Well, yeah, but there's a lot of stuff they pull into that book. I mean, that's where they bring back well. Spoilers. And Time all that. Trapper. Yeah, they, they bring back a bunch of people from the Legion, but they also bring back a bunch of people who hadn't really been seen since Infinite Crisis right. during that right. event. So, I mean, it's it's all over the place. Yeah. Um, I actually have a, a Legion reading list on the blog. So you can you can go on to conspiratorbrock.com and search for the, the Legion reading list. But yeah. 
Yeah, you can read the Legion and Mark Wade's uh, Mark Wade's run of Legion and the Supergirl in the Legion, which is the continuation well, of his run through the end. Like I read, uh, I read Legion of the Three Worlds first. That was the first Legion book I actually read, and it confused the living well, shit yeah, out of, of me. Yeah, of course. But then when I went and read Mark Wade's Legion, and I read through that, and I went back and read, uh, or and I started reading the uh, adventure comics, yeah. Legion stuff. Then I went back and reread uh, Legion of Three Worlds, and it made a lot more sense. Yeah, they basically the real Legion stays the real Legion. They're the ones that are still in the books. Um, the Earth Prime Legion stays the Earth Prime Legion, and the Le- I think it's two thirty seven. I may have the wrong Earth number. Not that it matters. Um, but I the, but they're like thrown off into the void. Like they except for uh, Excess Impulse and. Um, I'm going to call him Skeets, not Skeets. Um, Skeets. It's Gates, Skeets. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's in Legion Lost. Yeah. Uh, they're like the only three that kind of make it out of that because they were they were the only original characters. There weren't duplicates of the other ones. So. Yeah, I mean, I was never really into Legion, the Legion or anything like that. I didn't read any of the Mark Waid stuff. I jumped on it just because I'm a Jeff Johns, you know, mm-hmm. you know, writer. A Jeff Johns beep writer. So, yeah. um, but honestly, Jeff Johns work as incredible as it is about the legion fantastic the yeah. one best single issue book you have to read about legion is written by j michael straczynski and uh the arts by uh jesus, jesus was it was his name was his name again oh jesus the, the, marino jesus marino the, and the, it's the brave in and the bold. brave and the bold yeah that two it's a two-parter actually yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right yeah it's the one with the <laughs> really good the what is it the the Doom crap, patrol the, no the crappy team uh, the Legion, the, sub, wannabe, the, the yeah, Legion yeah. of Substitute Heroes. Yeah, I yeah. love that. I love how they're called Legion of Substitute Heroes. <laughs> all right, all right. There's your Legion uh, info for this week. Uh, all right, got a question from Liquid. Everyone gets one answer. Top of your head. I don't want to talk about this very long. <laughs> Think about it. How big is so your why cock? are we even answering the question? <laughs> because you ready? Hottest comic book ladies. Ooh, do it. Since I'm talking about the Legion, I'm just going to shout out Triplicate Girl. Go ahead, Brock. You got it. Uh, I, I'm blanking. Five. Go. Four, three. Oh my! Psylock. Okay, so, uh, stole Toby's answer. Uh-huh. Sorry, no. Toby's no. gonna say Black no. Cat. Yeah, or Black Canary. <clears throat> Charlie. Char- <laughs> Charlie's it's in like, deep fuck. There's too many. He is there's in deep. Many. I'm a little worried about Charlie. It's like too many. Dalek, look, Dalek in a dress. Yeah, but you're, you're like. Uh, I'm, <laughs> Well, his... My brain's just like going around like going. Well, <laughs> We've never I mean, seen Charlie yeah. like this before. The look that he is red on top of it too. The look that uh, he was giving Brock, and Brock looked so scared. Yeah. See, Brock should be the first one to jump on this answer. What's up? There's too many of them. Okay, I'll name one. Uh, Catwoman. There you go. Nice. That's a good pick. Selena. Mm. Well, for the listeners Adam, out there, Adam Hughes. Here, Catwoman. I'll go with Talia. I love Talia. Talia, Talia, Talia is, Talia is, incredible. Incredible. is a good, good choice. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. that's a good choice. All right, All right moving on. Uh, Obviously, this, none of us like boobs because none of us picked Power Girl. This is from Mark Hammond. Mark I got Hammond. black cats. He's got big old boobies. Oh, true. It's from Mark Hammond. Mark Hammond. That sounds like someone. Um, what would it take to get the Marvel film rights back to Disney? Uh, Wait, billion, what, say it again? what would it take to get all the Marvel film rights back to Disney? Uh, billions and billions and billions of dollars. Yeah, especially after Avengers Actually, and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not so much. We just need Fox not to make any more or, movies. Or lots of really bad movies. <laughs> when, if Fox fails enough movies and, and Sony or fails. Or if they just don't make them. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, they abandoned their own projects, like Daredevil, that I actually wanted to see. Yeah. Did you guys see that that trailer that Joe Garnahan put up? No, that no. Daredevil would have been badass. Oh, that Daredevil, yeah. Oh my I god, I like, actually kind of want Fox to keep yeah. that right and then like, give up. Uh, you know, Galactus and Silver Surfer would be better off for Marvel and yeah. just in that universe. Yeah, one and of, then that badass Daredevil uh, would have been badass for one Fox. Of my, one of my buddies, uh, Bucky. What's up, yo? Uh, he's a cool filmmaker. He's moving to LA. You know, so you'll probably you know hear about him soon. Uh, he's, Come on, uh, man. What's up? It's not even a challenge. What do you mean not a challenge? I'm up. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, dude, I was trying to introduce you guys on Facebook. No, he's a homie, and he was like showing me this, and it was so. F- this you got to check this out. What uh, Toby's pointing out, it's like it's like Black Dynamite. For those of you who don't don't know Black Dynamite, it's like Black Dynamite meets Daredevil. It's fucking incredible. Like seventies exploitation. Yeah, incredible. Well, this is like a what do they call like a sizzle reel or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it was just the feel. He took footage right. from different movies. Yeah, a lot of and put it. Shit. Yeah, and some comic book images put it together and kind of showed off what his version of the movie would have been like. Yeah. Holy moly, man, that would have been dope as fucking hell. All right, totally uh, different from the other day. The music movie. alone. Yeah. Uh, this is from Chris. He says, I no question, just wanted to know that he just finished buying the last few issues to complete his run to the 80s Suicide Squad comic. Good Lucky choice. man. Wait, what? 
He just he had no question, just wanted to let us know he, he bought the last few issues to complete his run of the 80s Suicide Squad. Oh, comic. congrats. Yay. It's a fantastic comic. We all Woo-hoo. love it here. I Keep him in your mylar. Don't that's be on, like these other guys. My list of stuff to get bound. <laughs> yeah, don't bound. Don't don't bind it. All right, keep it in your. All right, two more here. Let's uh, let's let's run this through, and then we want to hear about Brock's trip to Portland. Uh oh. Um, this is from this is from Brock, Geraldo. Brock is stripping. Yes, this is from Geraldo. Uh, Can do you I guys, leave? Do you guys have any good Supergirl stories to recommend? And does it do Supergirl fifty two any good? I actually have to do fifty two Supergirl. The old stuff. Yeesh. I was not a fan of the Peter David run. I was. I not, actually kind of liked that one, but then I didn't I, know it was bad, so I liked it. I liked the first like <laughs> if that's a good or bad. Answer. I liked like the first twelve issues of like the new like the Supergirl after that the one, yeah. before, but then it gets bad fast. Yeah. Is the one after that, it, the, the Michael Turner design? The Michael one? Turner one, yeah. yeah. And then it gets good again towards the end. Yeah, but it gets bad for a long time in the middle. Yeah, I tried it. I like the Superman, Batman, Supergirl. That's exactly yeah, what that's brought me story. into it. Yeah. It was Jeff like Loeb, right? Yeah. And then he wrote the first arc when they yeah. launched. And the first arc was great. And then, yeah. And just, meow. And the old Supergirl stuff is really rough. Like, See, unfortunately, I feel the same way about the new Super. Like, And I think I talked about this yeah. before. Mm-hmm. I seem to love origin issues for Supergirl. And typically even maybe a story after that. But as soon as you get beyond that point, it always tends to start losing my interest. You know, Supergirl should really be on the Titans or another team book. I think she is interesting, but not interesting enough to carry on weight. So she would fit really well in like one of those. You know, that's why she does well in the cartoons when she's not the main character. She's part of like a bigger team or something. Well, see, to me, I think back to Superman the Animated Series because they had at least one episode that was really about her yeah. and and actually Batgirl. It was sort of like their sort of sort of buddy episode similar to what you have. That was a in, good one um, too. That's true. Okay. I got an answer. Okay. I got an answer Skip after Skip the Supergirl book and just read World's Finest. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. Um on t- tag on that, going back to the old you know, Ryan was saying, Oh, the old Supergirl stories. Oh horrible. I agree. But <coughs> What's cool is the concept and idea from, I think it was Superman Family, when I think uh, Alexander Luther or Lex Luther, like some other version of him, was effing Supergirl. That was cool. Oh, just uh, it was like, yeah, it was, it was kind of like it was a cool the, little that, like. When it, was, uh, when it was during the death. Yeah, that was. Super- yeah, but that wasn't really Supergirl. That, that was, was like that a, weird yeah, blob. That, that blob thingy. Yeah. Oh, so he was effing a blob? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. weird. Well, it's, it's his own little and it was Lex Luther's mind inside that. Yeah, the dude, yeah. With, the dude with the, he, he the, dude with the hair, personal, right? Because he, he had, had hair. Pers- yes, flashlight. but it was still Lex. It's like a Supergirl Lex flashlight. Lex cloned his body and like moved his brain into his clone's body. It was like, it was like a new Lex with this giant red mane of a hair. Yeah, yeah. that was beautiful. Yeah. His yeah. beautiful long hair. He kind of looked like Brock. I know. <laughs> all right. Oh, you know what's the best about the Peter uh, Peter David uh, Supergirl run? What's that? Well, it's number one because all you see is her boobs and the S. Uh, Sweet. I like that costume. Yeah, the, it's like the costume. white shirt with the yeah. with the blue short uh, or blue like skirt thing. I like that costume. Um, all right, and the last one from um, Stefano here. I hope I'm always pronouncing that correct. Uh, what's the crew's opinion? Oh, God, this could be an episode by itself. What's the crew's opinion on variant covers and their effects on the health of the industry, both long and short Fuck term? Em. Well, since Ryan never gets me the variant covers I really want, I really don't know what hey, to say. <laughs> I, I bumped my Red She-Hulk numbers just to get you that variant cover. Yeah, covers, thank so. you. I'll buy the extra comics that you had to no, buy. No, that's fine. Fuck them. Variant covers... All of them should be robot chicken. <clears throat> yeah. That would be funny as hell. Or or Lego. Or Lego. If, Didn't we see that other cover out there? I if, like all those Scotty Young covers, man. I'm dying for them. I think um, for, I think the reason he's asking this specifically, uh, there was a article by Brian Hibbs, the one up yeah. on uh, Comic uh, Comic Book Resources, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and there's been a lot of the stuff on, on Bleeding Cool about this as well. Uh, just kind of the backlash against sp- specifically Marvel uh, with what they've been doing with the Marvel Now stuff, uh, and the amount of variant covers, and I will tell you that having to deal with about a th- about a half of every comic I order d- being a variant cover. It's a pain in the ass. It's difficult as a retailer. Yeah, I can make some money on them, but if they all went away tomorrow, I don't know that I would care. Mm-hmm. Um, well, especially since we got customers to come in that you know only want those, and they don't understand that we're limited on them. Right, we can't guarantee yeah. you a copy. And there's well, some some guys that come I, here to get really really mad at us. I mean, well, there is I, a yeah. So the way I have it set up here is I think about as perfect as a situation as you can get. I have a very select few 
very good customers. I spend a lot of money that I give the variance to for cover price or a little bit over. Good for you. So very cheap. That's awesome. Um, when it comes to the really high end stuff, there are a couple that I will charge a little bit more for, but not what most people charge. I give it to these guys. I tell everyone else, can't get them. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Mm-hmm. If you really want something, let me know. If you want to order, if you want to buy a hundred copies of a comic for the one in a hundred cover, I'll sell you the the variant cover at cover price. But you're gonna buy a hundred copies of the cover because I'm not gonna order this many, and no one ever takes yeah. me up with an offer. Um, you know, took you on a chi Hulk by buying the extra five issues. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't. Occasionally, I'll have a variant cover that I throw on the wall for ten bucks, and no one ever buys it. It goes in the bin for nine ninety nine, or it goes in the bin for five bucks, and then we sell them on a dollar sale. I mean, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Variant covers are dead on the wall after the first week, and people buy them the first week. Occasionally, some hold their value, but it's so rare. Mm-hmm. Well, Something like Walking Dead one hundred. Okay, I'll give it to you. Sure. That's something special. Well, that, that's a I'm milestone. Okay. That's a that's I'm a, okay that's with an achievement, that. right? But fourteen covers on on fucking well, and the uh, Uncanny Avengers number one or uh, un, yeah, Uncanny Avengers number one. It's ridiculous. I and, read. I well, read the. Well, Brian, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's one more thing, and one of the most offensive things I've ever seen is what Marvel's doing with these um these cure for the cancer covers oh, yeah, that they're this doing. Is what I was gonna bring up. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're so in order to so DC's doing these um, we can be hero blank covers which are just mm-hmm. cover price regular yeah. standard price we can order as many as we want Marvel for these uh, cure for the cancer covers they're kind of taking DC's initiative and doing like a, a special cover for a charity in order to order these covers we have to order I believe 125 percent of our normal order of the normal cover and then we can order these special covers as well. So for Batman, I could order all sketch covers of Batman. I could order zero issues of the regular cover or Justice League or any of these other ones that are coming up. For this, so let's say for Captain America, yeah. I have to uh, order X twenty three because I want that one. Right. Yeah. So for, wow. so for that one, I have to order. If I order forty copies of Cap, I now have to order like fifty copies of Cap, and then I can order these on top of them. So Marvel is trying to profit greatly. Yeah. Off these the charity thing. charity covers, which yeah. is like. Are you kidding me? Like yeah, this cause, is cause bullshit. Because I, I mean, I was reading that article, and then, it, and then I I saw uh, another article on I think Bleeding Cool or CBR where they showed all the covers that were pink, and I'm like, okay, but aren't these supposed to be fundraising covers? Aren't these supposed to be giving? Yeah, you really, know? what they should be doing is release that cover separately, and the people that want to help it, they could just buy the other cover. Yeah, so it's pink. And, and it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's got lot, like a, a pink lot of them shade. are going to have like a pink shading too for, for breast cancer. For breast cancer, yeah. Like, I mean, comics and breasts. I mean, why why couldn't they do something a little more creative here? <laughs> no, right? but anyways, though, I mean, if it was like a session, like, hey, get the regular or get this or get both to support it, and it should cost us the normal amount of money, but all the right. proceeds go to charity. Yeah. That would be the way to go. That's, well, that's what yeah. that's what they that's what DC was doing with the We Can Be Heroes. Is if you ordered that one, that was the one that had the We Can Be Heroes one, the blank right. one. It, it it went to charity, so you already got it. Yeah, I got a ton of the Batman. Yeah, one you got them, sold. Yeah. and we sold we sold out, right? Yeah, I got even more coming. So yeah, and they can just order them freely. They just they're all just fully available. Yeah, no, I I I I'm a lot of the variant stuff that's going on, especially with what's going on with Marvel with this whole, you know. Marvel Now thing, it, it's completely and utterly ridiculous the amount that they're pumping out. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's go, it goes up and down. Now, DC, get, don't get me wrong, DC has a lot of variant covers, but um, the way they do them tend to be pretty standard. You have like a one in ten variant, a one in twenty five variant, yeah. a one in a hundred variant. I mean, yeah, I, I get some of them. I make a few extra bucks, but it's like at the end of the day, well, eh, statistically, this this for this whole year, it's been the bigger titles normally had a fifty fifty, right? They had the fifty or the fifty. It was the no. one in twenty five. No, they had a. They had a. Well, they had those, but they had a. You got to order as many copies as you wanted of this variant cover for this very big title as the lowest ordered for that week. So the week Action Comics comes out, GI Combat comes out. Yeah, and I order eight copies of GI Combat. So this Action Comic variant, I can only get eight copies of because that's, that's my a really lowest. good system. I think that's actually yeah. oh, that's a that's, brilliant. System. And I throw them off for cover price, and that's I think that's fine. Yeah, but that's a brilliant system yeah. that kind of limits, you know, the retailer. Yeah, it's stuff like fifty fifty covers. I don't mind. Yeah. Companies like Boom and Dynamite. I mean, well, they got to do what they got to do to survive. They, right, Dynamite yeah. has four covers in every book, and it's like I'm not. I know Brian Hibbs hates it. I 
I don't hate it. I think it's kind of annoying. Well, but, for, I, but I'm not ordering a thousand copies to get the variants to flip them and, and throwing away the well, comics. For, for his store, that's what people do. <clears throat> for his store, because I've been to his store, it's it, if he ordered only four copies of that and he only got one, but somebody else wanted the copy that was already purchased. You know, he doesn't know off the shelf who's going to want it. Whereas here. You know, you order for the shelf, and most people just grab whatever cover. They don't have a particular, yeah. you know, here it's a little bit, but up there it seems like it's people are a little more specific. Well, a story from my days at Legends. Um, I remember we had one guy there who specifically wanted us to put one of every cover in his box. And then I found out shortly after that what he was actually doing was he was looking through each cover, figuring out which ones he wanted, and then putting the rest back on the yeah. shelf. I would be like, nope. Yeah. No chance. As soon as I found that, out, I'm like, so we're basically ordering extra copies of this book, and that's why we're getting stuck with. Yeah, no. and I tell people all the time, if you want a specific cover, be here Wednesday at 11 a.m. Mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I just pull what I pull, or tell you in advance. Uh, well, it, I can't. You, you could be just be like Toby and yell at Ryan afterwards. I can't. He tells I can't. You too bad. I can't track 125 people telling me they want cover A, cover B. No, that's no, bullshit. That's when you're talking. Books that we're ordering two or three copies of, like tracking every title. Like, there's a lot of books that come out every week. Like, no. no. Well, some Actually, people just don't. I mean, most people don't care. Not to defend the the people that are just have a problem with going for variants. I, I well, was that guy back in the day, but like, I didn't understand, you know, the whole retail side and what it took to yeah. get those variants. So sometimes it just. You know, requires a little edumacation on your well, on your guys' behalf, which is good. Yeah, you guys get, do tell people that. And I get people that come in all the time. They're like, oh, where are your variants? And I'm like, yeah. in people's boxes. I don't have any for the shelf. And they're like, oh, really? And I'm like, I have a lot of people that want them. I don't get as many as I could sell. Sure. I just get what I get. And if I qualify, cool. And I don't adjust my orders. To, I mean, if I, in a case like this where Toby really wanted this cover, I was close to it anyway. I'm like, yeah, that's fine or whatever. Yeah, but normally I, mean, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have. I mean, I, I always tell you, I'm like, if it's too much, then don't do it. No, I, I'm yeah. honestly well, too. And, and, and sometimes oh. it's easy to order for the variant because if it's a Jim Lee variant and you know you're going to sell the shit out of it, you know. Yeah, sometimes these variant covers are the fucking worst thing Oh, ever. I know. But and it's. A hardcore completionist only. Yeah. yeah. I'm not talking like the before Watchmen ones. I'm talking like the when he was doing those Legion ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, like you or I know you ordered. I ordered those for myself. Yeah, well, I ordered. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> but you can, those you know you can sell because they're Jim Lee. And I'm not saying like I don't buy covers. I buy variant covers, not all the time, but on a lot of the Jeff Johns and Grant Morrison stuff, I'm a big fan. I buy them for myself. Would I pay ten dollars on the shelf for them if i was a customer hell no it's for me it's like it's a part of running the store being behind the counter i do this because i can get it and i really like it but i mean there was a time where i was getting literally every variant for every book i got and i know you stack that books too much well i gotta say ryan you've been doing a really good job i mean i'm I'm poking fun at you but you actually know me very well and you actually when like the dynamite you usually pick the right cover down i know what you want you know but no i'm saying that though you usually do it to the rest of the customers too i mean mean, after a while you kind of get to know them and yeah you you, you try to do the best you know well when they have like oh here comes the one michael turner cover or or the one j scott campbell cover and there's 12 other covers oh better grab it for toby i know toby (laughs) wants it but you know i mean and i do like get that with a lot of customers but I couldn't take orders on a monthly basis yeah, from no, every totally. customer on which cover they want yeah, because no. that's that's craziness. It's too much work. Um, and that's it for question wise. Co- variant covers can die. We can. Well, we do like the art though, right? Some of the special art that uh, you know a oh, cover artist does. Some so. of the variant, like one of my favorite things, especially working at a comic shop. I don't think I necessarily want to own them this way, but. Yeah. Like, I remember with um, Brightest Day, the variants on that, when looking on the shelf and how you could, like, put them all together. And well, the, 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 the puzzle variants yeah. were funny because oh, you know, th- that's kind of a theme. They did that – but Image did that with um, Will Porteo and that, that whole piece that you put together with all the Image books at the time. With who? I don't oh, know. Oh, Will Tashio. 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 It's okay, bro. He's Will's- Filipino. <clears throat> Sorry, I can't pronounce names. I remember Assuming. they had a puzzle cover for New Avengers when it first started, X-Men, too. Yeah. Yeah. And Jim Lee X-Men? What yeah, else that, like? was, uh, that was the, they the put together yeah. the long way and they had the wraparound. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm like I said, I'm totally fine with it from time to time or number yeah. ones, but it's like when when Avenging, Avengers Academy number 14 gets a variant cover that's like a 1 in 30 variant cover, it's like, are you what the fuck? Why? Yeah. It just does not need a variant cover. Or and for DC, neither does Flash number sixteen. You know, I mean, yeah. that doesn't need a variant cover either. Oh yeah, I remember going back to Alex yeah. Ross 
those JSA variants were fucking oh, incredible. Sh- Whoa. Those were badass. Sure. But, but I'll tell you this. If you want to see them, they're in the JSA oh, trades. Really? Oh, yeah. that's cool. And sure. I give you that. You have a high-profile artist working yeah. with the art. They want to do something special for his run. I'm like, I'm not totally against it. I just... It, it needs to be limited. It's, I ended it's, up it's hunting crazy. them down and so, down so <laughs> what it comes down to is we only support variant covers by J. Scott Campbell, Jim Lee, and Alex Ross. <laughs> On books by Jeff Johns and Graham Morrison. Yeah. They're Ryan likes. <laughs> and Ethan Van Syver. And, and as long as it's a milestone issue or, you know. Well, every issue is a milestone issue now, so... Actually, no, I do love those variants that also came out for Power Girl. That was done by Gillen March. Those are fucking incredible, too. Wow. Oh, okay. All right, Brock. Yes. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have time to get to AVX 11. Uh, maybe we could just talk about it when we talk about 12 and, and do a big AVX wrap up. But let's see. Brock, let's hear about uh, you took a nice big trip to Portland. Yes. I Home, have. Comic book <clears throat> mecca, West Coast comic book mecca. If New York is the East Coast, Portland's the West Coast. Yeah, I would have to, I would have to definitely say that it was impressive. Because I, I went up this weekend to, um, I left Friday night, or Friday afternoon, uh, for friends who were getting married on Saturday, and they were nice enough to drop me off at Powell's uh, Friday night, so I was in Powell's and I got lost, and it was awesome. I ended up picking up a Jonah Hex, the first trade from the last run. Have you never read that before? Never read it. So I figured, hey, I'll start it by Powell's. It's used. It's cheap. Um... <laughs> Tell me real fast. What was the hottest comic woman that you picked, Charlie? Talia. Oh, that's, that's right. Pick. All that's right. <laughs> continue. Sorry. Portlandia. Continue. I was looking at Charlie. Oh, I'm like, which woman is fantastic? <laughs> um, right. Wedding was Saturday. And then um, wow, Charlie's wonderful co-host, uh, Jordan. Jordan! Um, on the infant lawn box. Jordan Fegley. <laughs> Fegley. 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 Um, was nice enough Fegley. to drive me around and take me to a couple of shops. Uh, we took a long time we ended up taking a long time so i only was able to go to three places uh first place we went to was uh things from another world dark horses uh they always have really chain. nice booths at cons their stores are are very like brick and mortar walk by stores it's there's not very much in them that's that's like for hardcore you know kind of bin divers or no i mean they're set know. up as mall stores and stuff yeah so uh i did get to see dark horses the outside of dark horses publishing offices Nice. Um, which was pretty cool. Uh, although I think that the display you that gone had in and said they make good hardcovers. They're closed. It was Sunday. Well, why don't you just go in there anyways? Let's throw a rock w- with, with a note. With a note. No. <laughs> Charlie West says you're making great hardcovers. <laughs> <laughs> There's what? And we put, get a phone call. Right? If and I, I put if my, I, if, if put my go, little Twitter handle on yeah, there. If I go up again, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll make a, a or you could just break trip in for you. next time and wait for him to show up. It's true. Oh, excellent. They had a display at the Dark Horse that had the Predator Alien um, in the like in the window, but I couldn't really take a picture because of the glare off the glass. But I assume that looks pretty cool at night. So <laughs> that's when you put the camera straight to the glass, with no like completely, completely to the glass. That's I yeah, I I, I didn't really care. Um, and then we went to for next time. Then we went to um, there was this collection, a collector's market next to it that had a whole bunch of like knickknack toys and like old toys and like superhero toys and they had a soda fountain shop in there and they were baking cookies and stuff but um mm, cookies they had a game boy for 20 bucks with sweet. tetris sweet and i was i was tempted but i was like no this trip is for for comic books um should I grab it for me yeah no me too no i got I, 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 I got you some other stuff so then we, then we decided we went to excalibur comics which is um bendis Mike Brian Michael Bendis's shop. Mm-hmm. That's where he has his pull list. Um, Rucka goes in there. Uh, Brubaker goes in there. Uh, Robertson, I guess, goes in there now. <laughs> Traitors. I know. All of them. Um, but uh, no, they have a great selection of back issues. Uh, tons of back issues. Their labeling is fantastic um, for the back issues. The They have a lot of trades. Um but their their current wall is is only about two months old. They don't really keep books on the shelf like on the wall for very long, um, so they cycle them very very quickly. Um, but no, nice store. I mean, they've been around since 1974. Uh, I had a nice time. Debbie, the the owner lady, was really really nice, and we talked shop for a little bit. 
Um, that's where I got you a couple issues of Booster Gold to finish off. Sweet. And some Dark Stars there. And uh, I think I got one Legion issue for, from there for you. Excellent. And then we went to the Cosmic Cosmic Monkey Comics. I like it's, that name. Oh, yeah, it, that's a this place name. was yeah. uh, this place was actually really cool. Like I haven't I haven't yet been up that to Isotope. Name, it must be. But um, this is what I feel. It, it had the boutique feel to it. Um, a lot of indie stuff, like real indie stuff, like the stuff that's printed on hard paper and stapled by hand and shit. That's awesome. Um, and they they had a, a section, a large section for kids. That's cool. um, which was really cool, and they actually had a. Um, if you want to, uh, this flight of stairs, um, you, there was a section that had this huge Sesame Street sign. Yes, and it was like a little area for kids to sit down and read and enjoy oh, yes. the books. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, but was really cool, uh, and they had a lot of trades. Uh, their current stock was again not very much. They cycle through it very quickly. But what was really cool is they had like a back room that was like off to the side that was back issues. And they had a ton of stuff there, and all their back issues were fifty percent off. So, like, I went to town and got uh, finished off some things there, and found your the rest of your dark stars, which was a Sweet. pain in the ass. Um, but no, this Portland, from what I've seen, has a really, really good comic book um, culture. A lot of great stores. Oh, yeah. um, I would have liked to have gone to maybe one or two more, um, but if I go up there again, I'll probably check some other ones out. Um, but actually, funny enough, the guy at um, Cosmic Monkey Comics, his name was Tim, and he used to work at RNK Comics down here, and a couple of the shops. And I guess he grew up in San Jose and stuff like that. How old is the guy? Uh, I don't know. He's probably probably our age. Huh? Yeah. Or a little older, that. like long hair. I, like I remember dark hair. I used to always like tell him to pull down different issues, and I'd look and then I'd say, "Can I open it?" And then sometimes at RNK. The backs are flipped over, and they're trying to co- charge like market price, and I was pissed, and I was like, <laughs> "No, I'm not going to buy this." <laughs> Sorry. No, it was really really fun. I had a great time. I ended up having to fill a box. It cost seven dollars. Media mail the ship back. <laughs> so it's a deal um, for the experience, right? Yeah, no, I I highly recommend uh, <clears throat> going and checking out these stores, or at least Excalibur and. Because I've been to the things from another world down at uh, Universal Cities or Universal Studios City Walk. Yeah, and that place. I mean, it's it's like okay, but it's you know, it's not a it's not a comic book store. Yeah, I mean, it's like, like I said before, it's a mall store. It's a yeah, it's the lampshade it's store, all new right? Stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, highly suggest Excalibur and uh, Cosmic Monkey Comics. Cool. Yeah, it was fun when I went there a couple years ago. Um, I only got to Excalibur, but um, a yeah, good store. And mm-hmm. There's so many people up there. I mean, big uh, comics. Yeah, yeah, they. I mean, they have a huge subscription base at Excalibur. <laughs> it's. I was like, holy crap, that's a lot. Yeah, I mean, a lot of stores. Uh, whenever I hear from stores, it's in have bigger ones, but we just have so many stores in this area, so it's yeah. like we all kind of have a lot fewer, they think, than other stores. Yeah. So. A lot of options. Yeah, which is which is funny because, but again, Portland has that where Portland has that um, that uh, New York mentality where there's different kind of areas that people live. Yeah. You know, like Soho and you know, mm-hmm. you know yeah. all Same those. Thing in San Francisco. Well, we got that yeah, it, but like in Portland, it's funny because it's like you literally go a couple blocks and you're in a different kind of type neighborhood and. And you can definitely see that the like there's cafes almost everywhere, uh, neighborhood bars everywhere. So I don't know. It just seems like um, it's a really just I had a really good time. I yeah, hear Portland's like a beer mecca. Yeah, the brew houses I guess are everywhere, and everyone's like, "So what do you want to drink?" I'm like Coors Light, and they looked at me funny. I'm like, "Look, I drink pissed beer. I'm sorry, that's just who I am. I don't have the palate." For it's your it's your southern uh, hospitality coming out. Oh, I'll drink Bush Light too. Give it to me. Wow. All right. We, uh, no love for Chuck. Come on, just huh? a, a few blows. Yeah, yeah, we got we got a few minutes. We got a few minutes. AVX eleven. I mean, you Charlie's hit it? got to open yeah. it up for us. <laughs> He's the AVX guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So AVX eleven came out with their big quote unquote death that they've been pimping, which the issue was good. I liked it. Yeah. I like the fact that they kind of are showing the dark side of the Phoenix coming out on everybody who got the Phoenix started 
go dark side in the various mm-hmm. issues leading up to this. So this issue was pretty much all about really Scott giving into that sort of dark yeah. side and that need for basically two very impactful things happened with Scott this issue for me. One, he pretty much just switched off Xavier, pretty much said, you die now, and Xavier fell over. And the other thing is he pretty much Bitch slapped Emma to take her power. Oh, no, he did more than bitch her. Uh, slap her. <laughs> <laughs> Let me. I was, I was hoping you're gonna set me up for this one. Yeah. He choked that bitch out. Yeah. <laughs> he choked her out, and she kind of liked it. She had that little half smile on her face. I was like, Did you read um, the Uncanny X Men from this week? No, I didn't. Is it good? You should. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna check it out. Yeah. You well, said so. We were talking before uh, the podcast. We're like, man, why couldn't the first like nine issues been like the last few? And I mean, I've still got my reservations on the series, uh, especially. So spoilers, if you didn't know, I mean, they killed Professor X. It was the ninth time he's died, whatever. Um, but you know, they've it, those man, those first five or six issues are just. You look back, it's like. What were you thinking? Just so boring, and mm-hmm. nothing mm-hmm. happened. Yeah, it's such a slow well, start it, to the it, series. It, it really, really those first few issues. I mean, despite the fact that it was Romanda Junior artwork, it was those those issues stunk of fear itself. Just, like uh, just the, the like that middle part of fear itself, where it's just like, okay, this person has this hammer, and they're going to fight this person. If you want to read well, about it, go over and it was just meandering. Yeah, it was just meandering, and it was like, all right, a bunch of fight scenes. We promise you fight scenes, so here's the fights. Oh yeah, the plot. Uh, I guess we're nine issues in. We should actually move the plot forward. Well, here's the way I look at it: the first couple of issues was fulfilling the Avengers vs. X Men <laughs> title, because that's all the first four. Well, actually, five issues were were. Here's the X-Men, here's the Avengers, fight! So that's what we got. Um, once the five got the power, it became less about Avengers versus X-Men and more about... Yeah, that these, should have been the start of it, is it the five of them as the Phoenix. At which point, cut the first five I wouldn't out. necessarily call it Avengers versus X-Men. Uh, well, sure, you call it a, a <laughs> decent book. I got to point this out just because I'm sure it's... I mean, it was discussed all over the interwebs, but it must be discussed here. At the comics conspiracy, because that's all that really matters. Oh, let's hear it. The opening scene, Captain, you know, cinematically panned, just on Captain talking just to so somebody. You know, the second I read the first part of that dialogue, I'm like, he's standing there talking to Hulk. I don't give a shit. Whatever. You know, I'm sorry. It was, one, it was predictable awesome. as shit. I'm like, am I reading Ultimates here? Is is this what I'm reading? That's literally what I thought well, when I read those first few pages. I'm sorry. Like, not everybody's was, a super crazy. It was boring. Uh, it was not boring. That was incredible. I thought it was fantastic. It, I, I'm A plus. I haven't seen Hulk and Captain in a while. Well, I, may, I don't read Ultimates. I don't read those shitty books, even though I love you, Hickman. I may have to go back and reread it because when I first read that, I thought he was standing at the edge of a cliff. It looks like he's standing at the edge of a cliff, and he's, like, talking into, like, the void. And then all of a sudden, he's like, oh, wait, the Hulk's standing in front of him. Where the hell did he come from? Like, it was a really weird shot. Well, yeah, it was a really weird shot because they didn't want you to see who he was talking to. So they kind of had the weird angle. If you didn't know who he was talking to, you're stupid. It was so predictable. So, well, and here's the funny thing. So he gets the Hulk okay, on their team. Snob. It's like, all right, so he gets the Hulk on his team. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a comic snob. <laughs> Hulk smash. All he's going to do in this issue is pound them into the ground. And what do they do? Pound them in the ground. It was like, yeah, I mean, the Hulk's there, and then he does, like, one thing. I, I, yeah. like, I didn't feel like, oh, what, what was this big setup for the Hulk? Like, Hulk didn't do anything. Like, to me, he hit him once. Wah. Okay. All right. To me, all that and a certain amount of what happened in the issue, I can already tell they're setting up for the Marvel Now stuff. They're trying to bring the Hulk back into... And this is one thing that kind of weirded me out a little. Is hey, it When did the Hulk shave? Or when did he grow hair back? Out of place, considering we had the Avengers Assemble book, just because it... it I'm not really sure where all that sort of fits, fits in because at first I thought it was a different universe, but then uh, Ryan was swearing it wasn't. You know, so Avengers all... Assemble it has to be post AVX. There's no way around really? it because it does not fit in. It, it is. It, it doesn't the... fit in post AVX either with the way they're changing things. Is this the one with Thanos on the cover or something? Yeah. 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 Or maybe so, it's all before AVX. But that's sort of my point is it doesn't make sense happening before AVX with this AV. So I have no clue. I don't know where all that fits together. I don't think it really does. But I get the impression that this was there. We need to bring the Hulk into this <clears throat> sort one of panel. family. Yeah. <laughs> so when we leave AVX and all these sort of consequences and this and that and relaunching the books, more of it's in line. And that's one of the sort of failings of Marvel 
versus Flashpoint. Flashpoint, when you started those next issues, everybody was kind of in the same boat. They didn't know where things stood across the board, so you're all kind of getting to know it. Marvel, I get the impression between what they're doing in AVX and what they are doing in the Incredible Hulk book and that kind of stuff. They're starting to get things to the point that when you pick up when they start the new Incredible Hulk book, when they yeah. start that... If you want to know how they got there, well, you go look at the last story arc of Incredible Hulk, or you go look at the sure, sure. AVX issues, and I, I'm the fact I can start seeing them go that direction is not necessarily a good thing. Mm. This is a total separate point that I was just thinking about. I just like a meaningful death. Professor Xavier died, and Marvel didn't go out and give give it feed it to fucking the 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 you know mainstream news uh, feeds that all they want to do is talk about comics now. Like, a lot of people that don't read comics that, you know, they came up to me and they're like, oh, Omar, I heard Professor Xavier died. What's up? Let's talk about it. This and that. They're like, before the big giants around my buddy, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Chester was coming up. Let's talk about it. I want to hear all about the shit. And I was like, telling them the setup and everything. I was like, yeah, man. I was like, and it's great because you know what? Guess what? You put a book out there, people read it, and they pass it on. And that's a great way to hear about mm-hmm. the story. You know, it doesn't, you're not to always like fucking make it such a big marketing, you know, ploy. Mm-hmm to come into the stores though that does good that does help does some good but with with in this case i just felt like i felt like yeah okay i'm glad i was reading this avx for just this issue well when they when they kill when they kill cyclops next issue people will care but professor x it's like i don't know i just don't know that most people care he's died so many times i actually i was reading an interview with bendis i think it was who was talking about like at first he was against killing off professor x but the more they kind of explored it, the more Professor X didn't really fit in what the X Men currently are. Sure, sure. And that's well, part of the. He reason. hasn't been in the books for like a decade. Exactly, because even going into it, you still sort of expect him to be there, but his role has basically been filled. There's no real room for well, him to this come is, back into it. This is what's happened. This, this, this is the thing with Professor X. Is the same thing kind of with Magneto. Is that you have these two characters that. The heart of these books started with the, kind of the feud between these two characters, and as time evolved, their feud no longer became the driving force for the book. So Magneto goes away for a little while, and he comes back, and he's this, you know, kind of shunned good guy now. And Professor X has a falling out, and kind of tries to find himself again, and he comes back, and it's like it's like the they're watching the X-Men kind of tear each other apart and it, it hurts because that's the, that's the thing that they created, mm-hmm. you know? So oh, come mean, on. It's so much fun when Magneto goes up to people and goes, you're sounding like me. Yeah. yeah that is yeah, <laughs> awesome. I love it when he did that with Cyclops and that, like those two panels, he was like, I went down that path, son. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll have a lot more when AVX 12 wraps up. Um, and they kill two Cyclops. Weeks, I think? Yeah. Uh, there's no way I'm right. I mean, he's, he's Dark Phoenix. He's yeah. not going to make oh, so it. So this up, yeah. is what Gene felt like. Oh, no, because they're going to kill him, and Gene's going to come back and say, "Where's Scott?" No, they're both going to be from the past. Be like, "What do you mean you just killed me?" And Gene died because the the ones from the past are coming back to the future. Oh, yeah. that that's going to be great. Well, you can make the X Men twelve again. I hope Bishop's back. I was going to say, is now if if they're setting Hulk up, does that mean the next issue, uh, uh, Cannonball and uh, Sunspot come in and, and defeat the Dark Phoenix, and that's why they get to join the Avengers? Of course, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you hater. So well, bad. okay, I have a question about the Hulk. Now, is when he's green, does it depend on the shading? Like, if it's brighter, is he smarter? If it's darker, is he dumber? No, they. <clears throat> When oh. he has a beard, he's smarter. When he has a beard, no. When it, he's calculating, okay. When he has a beard, yeah, maestro. So I talked a little bit about this before, <laughs> <laughs> but they've been doing this whole um, reverse the roles on the Hulk thing recently in the book, and at the end of the most recent issue, they explain a increase in the Hulk's intelligence through color. No. Through events in the book. Okay. Hence why foreshadowing, launching the new Hulk series, yeah. and bringing it... He's been smart and dumb oh, and gray and awesome. red and It was cool when he was Mr. Fix-It. Yeah, he was but never, never red. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's been, no, no. He was never red. He's he was every, every color of the rainbow. Yeah. I do really appreciate that one time where you 
she said, Omar, you got to look at that. Look at, look at Doom. What Doom does to Hulk. Like, <laughs> you know, because I haven't been reading. I was just fucking so happy. That book was so great see. for the first few issues because yeah. it was just so bonkers. And nah, I just kind of fell off of it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I actually like the last story arc. We're going to wrap up here. Uh, wrap it up. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this podcast. Um, hopefully some stuff happens in the next few weeks. We have more to talk about other than reading. Well, I like reading Twitter questions. It's fun. Um, but uh, be like, and we have real news to talk about, too. So hey, we didn't get to talk about hero clicks. What? What about your clicks? It's nothing. Everyone's excited. What do you mean nothing? Everyone's Giant excited. Size. Giant size X Men is gonna be re-released, and everyone is so funny because the whole the everyone on Realms they're all trying to get rid of their their expensive pieces now because like Magneto and Phoenix and all these other pieces they're like hundred bucks, eighty bucks, sixty bucks. They're trying to sell them off before you know get the value of it before, before the it, new one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'll have to let us know how that happens. Well, I didn't even know when this coming out, so we'll find out. Oh, if this is our 75th episode, we should have like this is like our. We should do a variant our version. Our die foil cover, our die cut foil embossed hollow. We'll shiny no, no, cover. no, 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 no. You know what you should do? You should do the Wildcats gold variant for the picture of this. There you go. Uh, but yeah, uh, join us next week for boring episode seventy six. Um, just a plain cover and no variants. Um, <laughs> maybe the variant for this will be like you know a good podcast. All right, um, we'll catch everyone next week. Uh, if you want to listen to this awesome episode day. again or any yeah. other episode, go to www.geekbox.net. Uh, you can go to the our uh, comicsconspiracy.biz, and you can uh, also find a lot of other stuff too. Uh, you can go visit us guys. all on our. Uh, Random blogs and stuff. Um, Brock's at spiritofbrock dot com. Uh, Omar is at comics and to kind. Uh, Charlie's on the Infinite Longbox podcast. So go listen Infinite to that. As well as Jordan. As well as Jordan Fagley, who 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 is awesome. Hey, Ushered Brock around. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are also all on Twitter. Ryan Higgins, Ryan Brock Sager, comics and to kind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Toby XI and Insanity and Chaos is Charlie. Uh, go say hello to us on there. Go follow us on there. Eh. You know, we have on, a parent podcast. We're on some Facebooks and stuff like that. Siblings. Yeah, we're uh, you go on um, go visit uh, the Geekbox uh, dot net or uh, I'm sorry, Geekbox dot net, and you can listen to the Geekbox. Come to it and good job, brain, as well as I haven't pipped it. I kind of missed the last few weeks. Um, uh, I'll talk podcast, which is the community member small yeah. podcast. So go listen to them. Uh, they're pretty cool too. Post in the Geekbox forum. Yes, forums at like Geekbox You can talk buy about some this. digital comics. Buy some digital comics. Thank you, Charlie. Digital comics. And coming, coming soon to the Comics Conspiracy eBay store. Uh, I'm putting on my Walking Dead books for sale, so Woo-hoo. you can see that. But that's going to still going to be a little bit. So, all right, real. We'll talk to everyone next week. Bye.